Hi, this is Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. So I'll tell you a bit about this week's prompt for the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group in a moment and I'll also tell you about the project I'm doing. But just to, to kick off, uh, I'm just going to be doing some, getting some colour down onto some, this is just a card stock. I'm going to use my gel plate just to get some colour down because I'm going to be using these for my project. Using two colours, cadmium red hue and also this cadmium red orange hue. Really going for some bright colours this week. So as I get the colour down onto the gel plate and onto, the, onto these pages, let me tell you about how we're going to do the prompts for the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group going forward. So Nina and I have decided to switch things up just a little bit. So the plan is that for week one of every month we will give you a prompt of the month and that can be interpreted in into any project really. It could be a journal page, it could be an artist trading card, a tag, you could do some collage, canvas, anything at all. The week two of the month it will be a recycle, repurpose, reuse, oblique, use your scraps type project and this is where you might want to use your kind of supplies in your flourish journal. Week three of the month then it's Let's Get Arty and that's about using some of your paints, inks, chalks, stencils, getting out really all the supplies you have and uh, again that could be done on any substrate, it could be a journal, be an artist trading card or a tag. For the fourth week of the month it will be Let's Journal and that could be journaling in uh, a junk journal, collage journal, scrap journal, glue book, smash book, anything at all. And of course you could actually then use any projects that you made in week one or week two and incorporate them into that. And then those months that have a fifth week then we'll let you know if there's a specific challenge or if it's a wild card, but we'll tell you that as it comes along. Now that's a lot of info but don't be concerned because we will say each week what the prompt is for that week. So first week of the month, first week of February, so our prompt for the month is love, hearts or valentines. Pretty obvious really. So to get to my project I have decided that I'm going to make, mine's is really going to be about love but perhaps not love in the way that might be thought about this time of year but that will become clearer as I go on. So I am going to make this small concertina journal. I'm going to fill it with something you might not be expecting but this little journal is all based around the things I love. So that's really the reason I picked these colours because I love these colours. So that was step one. I love making books, little books. So that's the kind of second reason for this. And what I put into it, you'll see that it's things that I love and I'm going to put little love notes in. So this will be a love notes lookbook. Uh, the project did change a bit as I went through, which isn't all that unusual for me, but uh, I got different ideas as I was going through and there was different things inspired me. So you'll see just now that I am I'm going to actually cover both sides of the card. This cardstock wasn't terribly thick. I'm getting low on my nice thick watercolour paper and I wanted to keep that back for another project that I'm working on. So I was trying to thicken these up by putting paint on both sides, but you will see that later on I end up gluing some together. So these were A4 sheets of paper that I tore into half to make A5 just to try and get more paint on them so that I didn't have the edges without paint. You will see, because my gel plate's really quite old now and it has a few bits out of it, a few little nicks in it, you'll see that in fact 
the paper isn't entirely covered but that's fine because that fits in really nicely with what I want to do next. So you'll see that I'm tearing it down further. I halved the A5 into A6 and then I'm halving the A6 again. So you'll see roughly about two and three quarter inches by about four and a quarter. So just over seven centimetres by about ten and a half, just roughly. So that just lets you know my page sizes. So I basically tear all of these into half. So because I'm going to be gluing two pages together, I'm looking now at the sides that I want to put another layer of paint on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this fluid acrylic quinacridone gold. And again, I'm going to put this down on my gel plate. And what I want to do is to put another layer down onto my little pages. What this will do is to kind of deepen the colour that's there and it will also put a bit of colour on those kind of white spots. Just doing a test there. It's not quite as deep as I want it so I'm going to make my paint just that little bit thicker. And I'm now going to get this onto one side of all the cards. At this point I'm planning to have eight pages in my accordion book. Uh, so I don't need to use, I don't need to print all of the, the bigger pages that I still have. So I put those off to the side. I dried those and now what I'm going to do is to take this fluid acrylic in burnt umber and I'll just put a little down here. I'll use a little bit of water just to make it even more fluid. And I'm just going to use a piece of sponge and dab around the edges. If I think there's still some white bits on the page, I might then just dab it onto that as well. But really, this is just to disguise those white edges. And I'll do that to 16, yes, yeah, 16 little cards. So I get all of those done and then I'm going to give them a good dry. Once they're dry, I'm going to take some black acrylic. I'm going to water it down a bit and then I'm just going to use an old fan brush and I'm actually just going to put some little splatters onto the, to the cards. And again, this is just about adding, well, it's about adding some interest, but also some more layers. And I always find this a very messy job and usually end up with it all over myself. Again I dried them and I'm really liking the way that they look but I want to use some gloss medium. So I had Mod Podge uh, available. Uh, didn't use my, my other one that I've got I'd been using this the other day, so I thought I may as well just use this again. And I'm just going to put a fairly thin layer on. I want to spread it out as much as possible. Normally, if I was using something like Mod Podge, once I put it down, I would then leave it to dry, usually overnight, because I certainly feel that Mod Podge has to dry fully. But I'd meant to do this a day earlier, didn't get the chance, so I'm having to just dry them off today. So I'm basically going to put one layer across the cards. I'm just using an old household paintbrush here. It does look as if it's a bit streaky, but actually it dries pretty flat. Using a heat tool just to try and get it to, to dry quicker. Now that does leave it feeling a bit sticky, but just leaving them aside for a minute or two, they, they kind of cool back down and some of the stickiness goes off it. So you can just see that that has added a nice bit of gloss to it. So again, just looking at what I want to be the kind of top and the bottom. Now I have this piece of fabric that I bought years ago for a different project. Uh, I doubt if it's still available. 
because it was a good few years and I think it was a kind of end piece that I got in a fabric store. But I want to use this and this had been part of my inspiration as well. When I started to think about the colours that I wanted to do my little book, I remembered I had this piece of fabric and it just seemed perfect for this. So what I'm going to do is to cut strips of this and they will act as the means by which I join the pages together. So I just nick it with my scissors and then just tear it down because I like the threads to be quite loose on it. So roughly judging the length that I want it to be, you'll see I'm not measuring anything today, just eyeballing it all. So I then cut enough pieces that I'll be able to use these as a kind of hinge, I suppose, to, to allow me to join the pages together. So this will be a no sew concertina journal, so I'm just going to use some glue and I just use this Beacon 3-in-1 glue. So I put some down the edge of the two pages that I want to join and then I'm just going to take one of my small strips. I'm going to put the main side to the outside of the book but the, the, the reverse side of the fabric's quite nice as well so I'm, I'm quite happy with that and just lining those up. And then I'll join my next page on just in the same way. So again just a bit of glue down the edge of each of my pages, not even spreading it out, just judging maybe mm, a millimetre or so between the pages and then just sticking that down. Now of course the threads all stick to my fingers but that's okay. So just to show you what I'll do next with the top side of the page, so this the fabric will actually be sandwiched in between the top and the bottom of the page. So just taking out another one and I'm literally just going to, to lay that down. Now of course because I tore the pages there will be some edges that still show and that's fine. I can go over that later just with some ink or something just to disguise any white edges that, that still might be showing. So just lining that up, if I work quickly enough then there's time to, to just move that a bit. And there we have the, the reverse side starting to go on. So I'll just show you one more here. And again, just getting a decent amount of glue down. Now this was an interesting one because it had that nice rough edge. I wasn't sure if I might have to cut that at some point, but I just go with it just now anyway. And I'm just looking to make sure that the edges line up as closely as possible with the other side. Then I just continue along. Now at this point, or, or just a little bit further on anyway, I decided that rather than eight pages, I would just make it six. Uh, partly because I couldn't get the eight pages to show in the camera. But there was also another reason, and I'll come to that in a moment or two. So I just continue along until I've got six pages joined up and have both the backs of the page and the fronts of the page on. And there we have it. Now I could trim the fabric down if I wanted, but I actually quite like it kind of sticking up like that and, and sticking out the bottom. So I'm just looking at these spare pages. I'm thinking I might make little pockets with them. Just looking there at uh, what sort of size I would make them. But this was the other thing that was influencing me today. These are some of my own photographs. Some of them from the garden. Uh, some are pieces of my artwork and this is where I decided to make it a kind of lookbook. So I've picked out six of these images that I'm now going to 
put onto these pages somehow. Now I did spend a bit of time here, you see I've left a little white edge at the top because I was thinking about attaching them in a way that I could then flip them up and have something underneath it. So I've left this bit in just because, you know, if you wanted to do a project like this, you might do it in a slightly different way. So I'm just letting you see the kind of different ideas I had. So one was to use a piece of fabric to glue part of it to the image and part of it to the back of the book in a way that would then allow me to flip the photos up. I also took a piece of the the printed card that was left over and looked at whether or not I might make a sort of hinge with it. Again, just being able to lift the photo up and have something underneath because originally when I was thinking about this being love notes, I was thinking about keeping them, any notes being kind of hidden. But again, I changed my mind on that. Uh, I'm planning to do another book like this and I might do it slightly differently and do more of the, the kind of hiding of things underneath the images. One of my big concerns about this was these images were printed on an inkjet printer, it's on photo paper. They were done some time ago but I was just a bit concerned if I used too much wet glue on them that it might somehow damage the image. You can see there just as I, I play away just trying to decide what I might do. And you know this is just part of the creative process just thinking about different ways to do things. Anyway in the end I abandon that idea. I cut off the little white strip and what I decide to do, I've, I've put the images in place, I know which ones I want to go on which page, looking again at whether I want little pockets down below, moving the images about to see where they're best placed and where I would put any words that I want to include. And then what I decide to do is just to use a glue stick to glue these in place. So of course I try not to get the glue on the front of the image at all, just keeping it on the back, trying not to make it too thick but the same token trying to get to the edges so I can glue it fully down. I will use that piece of, I think it's a piece of deli paper, I'll use that later just to lean down on top of the f images just to make sure that they're fully in, in place. Really didn't want to get glue on them as far as possible. So just using a clean piece of that deli paper and leaning down. Just pressing them into place. I had a little bit of glue on that one there but I do manage to get it off just using a tiny bit of water and a piece of that fabric. So I now want to do a test. I want to write my words on this tissue paper, the wet strength tissue paper. So I'm just going to test it against one of the little off cuts of card. So I cut the word out and all I'm going to do is try using a glue stick. Now the glue stick did work reasonably well. Sorry I'm a bit out of camera there. There it is. I just used that. I turn it over to the side that's got all the colours on it. It's not blending in quite as much as I thought it would but I thought well it might be okay but in the end I actually decide to use some of the gloss Mod Podge again. So I just put some Mod Podge down, put my word on top of it, dab it in and then spread the Mod Podge over the top. Just trying to smooth it out a little and I will hit this with the heat tool again. And here are my love notes. Light dancing. After the rain. Going deep. 
my world, nature, and art. So all things that I love, so all things that I've noted in my love notes concertina journal and I'll just use a piece of that fabric to wrap around it. Now this could be folded in different ways as you see I folded the pages in towards each other there. It could be folded in more uh, the kind of concertina style pages up against each other. I'm still slightly concerned here about the pages sticking because Mod Podge can do that. So different ways it could be folded and I would envisage it sitting on a bookshelf in my study here where my computer is or in my studio and just having it displayed so that I can look at those images and love notes that I've written there. Now I might at some point add some more to this. I did think about even a piece of fabric covering each of the image so that it would then be a case of lifting the fabric up to see the image. You know I just kept thinking about things that could be added whether it was pockets or that but on the other hand I may just leave this as is and do another one in the near future but just slightly differently. So I do hope you enjoy this project. Of course Nina will have a video this week and I'll leave a link to her video below and also a link to the Mixed Media Emporium. So just a reminder the prompt is love, hearts or valentines or of course you could do all of those and incorporate them all into one project. So take care everybody, thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.